but you can still attack that rook with your queen here queen f3 you are attacking the rook and the rook cannot escape meaning you are going to win the rook since the rook is more valuable than the minor pieces your opponent is most likely to give up a knight instead of losing the rook so you are going to capture that rook that knight forking the king the rook and the pawn but white can solve all these problems with bishop d7 because bishop d7 allows the queen to defend the rook it blocks the check and the bishop also defends the pawn so what you will do is that you will simply move away at the end of these forcing lines you gained a knight you won a knight and the opponent only won a pawn hi everyone coach sipo here and today we are going to learn how to quickly destroy your opponent in just few moves in the queen's game beat accepted variation this video was requested by Dumisha via last week's video comment section. Now I know most people who are following this channel, especially those who watched last week's video, might be shocked to see me dealing with specific openings, since I made it very clear that you shouldn't be obsessed with studying openings. Well, I still stand my ground. Obsessing about openings while you are an under 21 and rated player won't help your ultimate understanding of chess. Nevertheless, there is nothing wrong learning some few basic openings as a beginner. But again, don't be too obsessed. Otherwise, you'll end up being one of those players who say, According to the engine I was winning, I had a plus to advantage. But my opponent was lucky. He eventually won the game. Chess is so unfair. LOL, chess is so unfair indeed, isn't it? Now let's dive into the Queen's Gambit accepted variation. The queen's gambit simply means starting with the pawn to d4. Your opponent will play pawn to d5. Now you are going to follow with your pawn to c4. Now pay attention that your pawn on c4 is undefended, which is what qualifies this as a gambit. A gambit, as I explained, is when you give up your pawn so that you can gain other advantages. Now, if the opponent takes your pawn, it becomes the queen's gambit accepted. If they don't take the pawn and play other moves, such as pawn e6 defending their pawn, or pawn c6, slav defense defending their pawn, it becomes queen's gambit declined because they did not take your pawn. They are not interested in your offer. Hence, it becomes queen's gambit declined but for today's tutorial we are going to focus on the queen's gambit accepted now let's go ahead black takes the pawn now what's gonna happen after this move you're gonna tell black that i want my pawn back and you're gonna do that by playing your pawn to e3 the reason for this move is that you are opening for your bishop so that it attacks that pawn pay attention when you open for the bishop you don't play your pawn twice. You simply play it once, even though playing your pawn to e4 is also playable if you want um, space in the center and also want a hanging pawn, pawn center. But um, for the purpose of this video, we are going to focus on attacking that pawn because we know most beginners are most likely to defend their pawn. So you're gonna move your pawn once now there is nothing wrong let me make it clear there is nothing wrong for black to play queen's gambit accepted as long as they have no intentions of defending that pawn for example black might continue with his or her normal development instead of defending that pawn but we all know most beginners are so materialistic so they will defend that pawn now, after they defend their pawn, what you will do is that you're going to play pawn to a4, undermining the defender so that the c4, the c4 pawn becomes soft. After you played your pawn to a4, most of these beginners have three options. They will either take the pawn, that's variation one, 
or defend their pawn. That's variation two. Or defend their pawn with the C pawn instead of the A pawn. Now we are going to look at all these different variations. So let's start with a uh, pawn takes A4. No, no, no. There's something I'm doing wrong here. Guys, while recording my last week's video, I was on 97 subscribers and I asked you to help me get to 100 subscribers, which was my immediate goal then. So I am so happy and grateful to announce that I finally achieved that goal. Thanks to you guys. I am truly grateful. Now that I have, I have expressed my gratitude, let's go ahead and learn about these three variations. Now let's start with taking the pawn. Black is already a pawn up, so when he takes, he is going to be two pawns up now. But the good news for us is that we can simply regain our two pawns. Both of these pawns are weak. It all starts with queen takes the A pawn, check. And it doesn't matter how black gets out of check, be with the bishop, queen, pawn, or knight. White's next move will be to take the second pawn. So in doing that, White will regain both of his pawns. Even though it might appear as if things are equal, in reality, White has a huge advantage in this position after taking the pawn because White has two pawns in the center and Black has only one. And Black, white will, is already having a half open file, which makes that pawn a weakness. And that is also a weakness. White's only weakness is this one. So white has a huge advantage. So we know now if black takes, you simply take with the queen, check, and take your second pawn and enjoy your advantages. So if black doesn't take my pawn on a4 and defends with his pawn, with his a pawn, you always take if they defend that pawn. So you take, if they take, you win a rook. So you are already winning the game. Okay. We master the first variation, which is when black takes. We master the second variation, which is when black defends the b pawn with the a pawn what if they defend with the c pawn well you always take if they don't take you you always take now of course you won't be able to capture that rook since the a pawn is still there but you can still attack that rook with your queen here Queen f3, you are attacking the rook, and the rook cannot escape, meaning you are going to win the rook. Since the rook is more valuable than the minor pieces, your opponent is most likely to give up a knight instead of losing the rook. So you are going to capture that rook, that knight, forking the king, the rook, and the pawn. But white can solve all these problems with bishop d7. Because bishop d7 allows the queen to defend the rook. It blocks the check. And the bishop also defends the pawn. So what you will do is that you will simply move away. At the end of these forcing lines, you gained a knight. You won a knight. And the opponent only won a pawn. Which means you are going to win this game. So now your plan will be to just develop your pieces, continue with your normal development. Um, castle. Then later on, you are going to push the pawn so that you take out the other bishop after castling. And then you are going to use these weaknesses and checkmate your opponent. Or you will just exchange your pieces and go to the end game and win your game thanks to misha for your request i hope you now master how to play the queen's gambit accepted but even though i was not planning to teach you the queen's gambit declined 
just in case your opponent doesn't take the pawn, there is nothing complicated there. You will simply, let's say they play queen's gambit declined. In that case, you simply play your opening as normal. Develop your minor pieces, castle. If you don't know what to do when your opponents play openings you haven't seen before, I recommend that you watch our most trending video here on top. And I guarantee you that it will help you play any opening, even if you haven't seen it before and you are going to play it in a decent manner. Thanks for watching this week's video. And please don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Peace.